all of the seeds that we brought with us when we moved last year. This is the last of our seeds from Scotland. The idea is to plant all of them and find out what does and doesn't work here in a new growing zone. I believe this is zone 6A here. We have a lot of sunlight hours in summer here and if we grow under cover I believe we can also extend that growing season too. We have a lot of flowers, both edible and ornamental, flowers that can be dried to make wreaths. Uh, the edible flowers are really great to brighten up salads. Nasturtiums are one of my favourites. I have a lot of varieties of those. Also a lot of chilies. They're really fun to grow. It's something that we particularly enjoy. This week we bought our seed potatoes. I don't think we can import our Scottish tatties anymore. So we're going to make do with um, the varieties that are available to us here, which is fine. There is so much choice. Apparently the soil temperature has to be above 8 degrees. So we may be waiting until late May, perhaps early June. We still have a lot of planning to do. We can potentially start germinating some of these, uh, definitely the salads, and we'll see what we can grow. Time to do some soil tests. So we're testing the soil and also we're going to do a test bed for the Hugo culture bed. It'll be double the length of this. It's just uh, pretty tough digging. So we've doubled it. Got a lot of rocks in there, big rocks. It's a little bit clay, but we'll try and double it again long ways. Even in the middle of nowhere, let's find a little. Can you see that? A little bit of bone china. So, about that long. Ideally, we go a bit lower, but so many rocks in it that we're going at that level. It's about three foot wide. Two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine foot long. So yeah, if you've got the option, Try and go at least a foot. I mean, we've not gone very deep here. 
maybe half a foot. Deeper the better really. Put all your dry material in so we'll fill this whole thing. Luckily we've got loads of old dry logs so we'll fill it with that. And then you'll end up with something that looks a bit like that. Luckily we had loads of perfect logs so it fits in nicely. And the next stage, slightly bigger things. So that's all the smaller matter added. All these dead leaves should do the trick. Detritus. Um, so that's all the dead leaves and whatnot. Uh, we'll mix some more of some of this grass that was swept up earlier as well. Essentially, you're making a giant compost heap. So that's all the hay on, well grass, and um, so at this stage really you should use um, compost, but we don't have that luxury, and really you should soak the whole thing down, um, but we don't actually have that luxury either, so we've just gone for the soil that we cut out of the hole on top, and now we'll put our good soil on that we've got over the top of this. Okay, so that's the good soil on. We do need a lot more of it, but we'll let that settle in and let the weather take its course a little bit as well, seeing as though we've not soaked it like you meant to. But essentially, it's almost done. I didn't kill him.
So today we're going to do a little bit of potting. And um, this is about 40 litres of compost. And we're going to mix in maybe what, 30%? Roughly, yeah. We'll just see how it looks. This is coconut fibre. Uh, and then we're going to add some perlite as well for better drainage. Let's get it, mate. Add the pear light. So the mix looks good. We'll just fill the little trays up, easiest way possible. So that's stage one of getting them all filled. So save all your toilet rolls work brilliant for starting seeds um, also get yourself a soil blocker call the soil blocker yep soil blockers soil blocker we're going to invest in them next year basically it just makes tiny little blocks like this and then you don't need this horrible plastic but unfortunately we can't get one at the minute but hopefully by next year start planting the seeds before it gets a bit ridiculous.